The Sacramento Republic welcome the Seattle Sounders to a club that has yet to earn not only a win, but a single point against the Republic here at Papa Murphy's Park in five tries. Tonight, Sacramento looks to make it 6-0. This USL match on My58 is brought to you by UC Davis Health. Alongside former MLS defender Kevin Goldthwait, I'm Rob McAllister. It's not going to get any easier for Seattle to break this dreaded streak as the Republic are off to another great start. In the first three weeks, Republic have tallied seven points. The most impressive, the last two weeks we've seen the boys in Old Glory Red gut out points despite Kevin not playing their best. That's right, Rob. Have not played their West, but it's a best. It's a long season and vital pickup points when things aren't going your way, which Sacramento's done a really good job of so far. In order to break that streak of poor performance, I want to see Sacramento utilize this inverted winger play that they've done a great job the last few weeks of getting good results. We see Bijev on the left side cutting into his favorite right side, right foot, draws a penalty, and then earlier a couple weeks ago, again, Bijev, Bijev on that left side, coming into his right foot, dipping his shoulder, great strike on target, and an easy follow-up goal by Isley. Sacramento needs to do more of this in order to be successful. Well, so far, the success has treated them well. They're looking pretty good in the standings. Even though it shows seventh place, they're undefeated, and most of the teams above them have played several more games than them. So Sacramento off to a good start here in 2018. Yeah, undefeated, great, great place to be still early in the season. And Sacramento's in the same position last, last year as they are today. Important for them to keep getting better week by week. Sacramento is 7-1-1 one, one, all time against the Sounders, too. Can they make it win number eight? We'll have your starting lineups coming up next here on My58. When someone else depends on you, the question of healthcare can stop you in your tracks. But candidly, it all really comes down to one big question. Who offers the very best healthcare? UC Davis Health. Visit answers.ucdavis.edu. During open enrollment, all those questions often lead only to confusion. But when you stop and ask who provides the very best healthcare, suddenly it all becomes clear. UC Davis Health. Visit answers.ucdavis.edu. Spring is coming. Time to save on a new Toyota. Many models come with Toyota Safety Sense. Standard. Get 0% financing plus $500 cash back on RAV4 or RAV4 Hybrid. Toyota. Let's go places. Papa Murphy's presents a fresh take on fresh. Here's the deal. If it comes from a freezer, not fresh. Box, not fresh. Bag, not fresh. Fresh means just chopped vegetables. Cheese grated by us daily. Fresh means we don't even have ovens. Because you have an oven. So you can feel good about feeding it to your... Aww. Home Bake and XL NY Pizza, topped with giant pepperoni and ground sausage on an extra-large foldable New York-style crust. Just $8. Papa Murphy's. Love at 425 degrees. Exhilarating. Thrilling, electrifying. No, I'm not talking about my style of racing. I'm talking about the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event. Check out the Clarity Plug-In Hybrid. You can do your day-to-day -day driving using only electric. Going on a road trip, there's gas to back you up. It's got a 340 mile combined range rating. And best of all, it is way easier to use than my company car. The Honda Dream Garage Spring Event is on now. You can get a great deal on the Clarity Plug-In Hybrid, a KBB.com best buy for 2018. The Republic, the Sounders, too, here in a USL Western Conference clash. Let's take a look at our Consolidated Communications matchup of the game. Sounders, too, a familiar face will be key to their success this season. Coming off the bench tonight, 30-year-old David Estrada, who played with the Republic in 2015. And Estrada, great job at relieving pressure with his penetrating runs, and Sacramento Thanks, needs to stay in front of him, not let him have space in order to, to, to quell him. It's been a player that was fantastic to watch in Sacramento. Can he be electric in the Seattle scene? Well, We'll have to wait and see. Let's take a look now for Sacramento. Let's look at Cameron Owasa. Familiar face, the local kid coming back home. He's played very well. Uh, Cam's a goal scorer, and that's what he's been doing whenever he wears that Sacramento shirt. Need him to continue to take chances and roll off the confidence that he's building here right now. Let's take a look now at our US Bank starting 11. We begin with the Sounders 2, and getting his first start in 2018, Sam Fowler, and a debut a year ago uh, did not go well 
Gave up four goals against the Real Monarchs. He's hoping for a, a different look here tonight. Yeah, another guy here, Sam Rogers, to, to, to keep an eye. Number 33, center back, young player. A lot, of, a lot of hope, a lot of expectations on his shoulders right now. And for Sacramento, they're going to go with the 4-3-3. Tends to be a 4-2-3 one at times as well. Jeremy Hall is going to be in the center back position because of an injury to Cole Seiler. Yeah, Adam Moffitt, glad to see his name in the lineup for two or three consecutive weeks. Now it looks like he's kind of finally figured out that injury bug and, and hopefully he's here for the long haul now. Play the first full 90 for the first time in a year. So it's good to see number 16 in the lineup. And Kevin, we've got a good one on hand tonight between two clubs that have different goals. We have the Seattle Sounders, too, who are looking to develop players for the MLS side. You've got Sacramento, who also has a younger team this year and is looking toward a championship at the end of the season. Absolutely. It's an interesting little dichotomy here of where these guys are going to be going and what their focuses are. But Sacramento ultimately still has that MLS aspirations, too, and, and development's very important for them. Well, let's take a look at your Chevy keys to the match. Yeah, keys to the match here. It's the first five and final five. Sacramento needs to start strong and finish strong on both the first and second half. Second is be proactive. Don't be reactive. Start to start uh, to, to do the Wayne Gretzky quote. Skate, uh, move to where the ball is going to be, not where it is. And finally, communicate. Still early in the season. You got a lot of new faces in the lineup. Communication always helps solve confusing problems. And I want to see Sacramento do that a lot tonight. Sacramento in the old glory red. It's the Sounders too and the Ray green and blue shorts. Our referee tonight is Michael Ratchuk. He'll be assisted by Michael Kaepernick. Chris Elliott and the fourth official is Michael Zapata. Sounders two, three points on the year. They're one and two, a negative two goal differential. Sacramento, seven points on the year, plus two in that department. And we are underway from the capital of California. And the rave green will begin things off here to the right side. Number 37, keep an eye on him. Shannon Hopiao, the 19-year-old from Hawaii. And the flag goes up as Vian Bajev was just out of play. But Hopiao, a 19-year-old Academy product, the first homegrown player in a sense that it's not from the Seattle region. And he was grabbed uh, from a partnership deal that includes the state of Hawaii for the Sounders team. They're happy to have him here in the Sounders too for the second consecutive season. Adam Moffitt, big swing. And how about Justin Schmidt getting his very first start for Sacramento at the left back position here in 2018, came over from the ground. Salt Lake side, Real Monarchs, nine MLS appearances in 2017. As he takes things back, we'll take a look now at our UC Davis health injury report. And still out, Elliot Horth at right knee, Josh Turnley, the starting left back. He is still out, and Cole Seiler dealing with an issue. So he will be out of this game. Good through ball here. Chance for the right side for Wilson Nisha. Nisha lays it up to Aliman. Back to Nisha in the 18. And a foul is blown against Kevin Aliman, but Good pace, good buildup from the back. A good buildup, probably not the best ball, if you're being honest there, from uh, from Sacramento Tainter across the pitch, but finds a good run by Wilson Nisha on that right side nonetheless, and just kind of a late challenge by Olimon there, conceding that foul and relieving the pressure for Seattle. See a lot of pressure from Sacramento, but we've been surprised with Kevin as the combination play from the guys, Iwasa, Nisha, Aliman, and Bajev. They've been interchangeable at times, and that's a good sign for Simon Elliott in the Republic. Yeah, I mean, I think it just shows you've got skilled players up there that have played a lot of games, not necessarily played games together, but have the, the educated minds. It's a good little tackle here by, by Iwasa, but have the ability to kind of be fluid up there when changes are needed, when someone makes a run, you've got the covers, you've got the people filling in. Good responsible play as a chance for Seattle to break here. To the left side they go, looking to break something happen. Here is Nick Hines, a converted left back, lobs one in, and out of play it goes. So Nick Hines played left back and attacking mid in college, and then came into the professional ranks as a defensive player. Now he's moving back in the attacking mode here. Seattle likes just his athleticism and what he can do all over the pitch. That's always interesting. You see players sometimes, uh, Transition from the forward towards the back, whether it's a midfield moving back to a defender, but you rarely see like from the, the college to professional ranks, the player going, moving forward in the field, if you will. Nick 
First of the evening for the Sounders two headed away Justin Schmidt. Sacramento looking to break. They've been very successful against the Sounders two side. Up over the top, Shannon Gomez now making a run. Doesn't have been much help, and so Aliman will have to come back and recover. Well done by Sacramento. The break to relieve pressure off that corner kick. And a good decision by Shannon Gomez to, to bring it back for clearance right there to retain possession. Jeremy Hall back in the lineup, a little banged up a week ago, so we got a week off, and a player who led the Republic in minutes played in 2017, and nearing the age of 30 will be good to have him a little bit more rest along the season here. Beyond Bajev, Iwasa trying to keep it in play as it just falls out. Whistle blows as it appears to be Adam Moffitt, who is taking a tumble out of the midfield, and the training staff will come out. Well, for our fans at home, you can follow live stats and more via Twitter, the club's Twitter handle at Sac Republic FC or hashtag SACVSEA. And never a good sign when Adam Moffitt, who spent the majority of 2017 on the injured list, to see him down here early in this match in week number four. We talked about it, it's been a year. Almost to the day where Adam Moffitt made his last full 90 minutes start and play. And he played the full 90 against Rio Grande Valley. And Rio Grande Valley feeling like they really blew one there as they allowed a cross sent in by Adam Moffitt and ended up being an own goal. And the Republic, who were down two goals at the break, ended up scoring two in the second half to even it all up. Cameron Awasa scored on an assist from Kevin Aliman. And that was the difference there. So we talked about in the pregame, Kevin, but two weeks in a row now, it's been no secret. Sacramento has not played their best form of soccer. Talked to GM Todd Dunavit, though. He said the guys are fired up. He said, you know what? They know they didn't play well, but it's good to have four points as a result. Yeah, especially early in the season, you know, and it's a long season, too. It's, you, you've got to be able to understand that you're not going to have your, your best stuff every week but if you're able to go out there and I think it's something that we didn't see last year you saw Sacramento have some decent games and, and still not be able to get results and get points but this year so far the games they were, that they haven't performed well at least they've been able to go out there and, and scrape some points together which is a, a good thing to see and a nice change and a nice refreshing thing to see but still it's a long season it's also good to see the guys be frustrated with it you know what on the on the positive side being optimistic we're getting results we're getting points but still we've got to be better and need to perform better because it's not going to last the season. You're not going to be able to get points every single week when you're playing poorly. So Adam Moffitt has been taken off training staff. Looks like he may be dealing with a cramp and it's hamstring or maybe it's quad. Uh, they're like trying a, to work like him out a little quad, bit. Looks like a quad thing. And so he's, he's had all those issues with his groin. You, ne you never know if that's part of it. So Republic playing with 10 men now. They're moving forward. Wilson Nisha looking for some space. Kevin Aliman. Playing almost in that 10 role for Sacramento. He'll come back a bit. And while it looks like a 4-3-3 at times, Kevin, you can see it now. It's a 4-2-3 with Adam Moffat out on the sideline. But it looks like he's about ready to come back in. Move here from Ray Sari. Moving forward, young captain for the Sounders 2 team. Has a good opportunity here. Shannon Gomez looking to get back and will shield Sari. But Ray Sari, 22 years of age, the oldest member in the starting lineup here, the Sounders 2 tonight. Yeah, really young side, but Ray Sari. I guess the veteran in that lineup here today, and it just kind of goes to show that Seattle, you know, they focus on players 22, 21, and younger. You see some guys out here 18 years old, 17 years old, trying to develop these guys and get them ready, get them some experience. When you look at the back line for the Sounders too, Kevin, and the oldest player is Rodrigo L, number 92, the right back for the Sounders. Everyone else is a teenager at this point. I and mean, we're talking a young team where the average age here at a quick glance is about 18 years of age on the pitch for the Sounders too. How does Sacramento take advantage of that back line? I guess they get, they're going to they're going to take some chances. They're probably not going to be as organized 
as a more experienced back line, a good piece of play right here. Moving forward, Nick Hines again has incredible pace. He tries to dig it forward for a little chance for David Olsen, and Olsen's not able to get there in time. Great touch. Good touch from Aliman. The flag goes up. But to answer your question, Rob, I think it's really it's a movement off the ball up front. Consistent movement, finding seams, finding gaps. I think that's the best way to take advantage of that young, youthful back four. Ball pops up. Hard tackle. And it's Michael Radchuk, the referee, going to have a quick conversation, maybe a slight warning for Kevin Aliman. It will be the Republic's ball here on the free kick. It'll be Jeremy Hall wearing the captain's armband tonight. All going to size us up in between a couple of the wet spots here. Nearly two inches of rain over the last couple of days here in Sacramento, and it has drenched this field, doing a lot better. It was a pretty windy day. Tough challenge here along the touchline between Tainer and what appears to be Felix Shankham. But the field a bit wet, Kevin, in certain spots. It's going to slow the ball down a little bit. So both teams are going to be challenged with that as the grounds crew try to get this back in shape in time. But the wind dried it out a tad, but just not enough as so much rain came down in about a 36-hour period. Alamon follies it down. Usman on the ground it goes, finding the feet of Jeremy Hall. Gomez getting that start at the right back position with Elliot Horde still out. ESPN Plus, the new streaming home of the USL in the United States. Watch all of the action through 2018 in the regular season and the USL Cup playoffs starting April 14th. A hard challenge, and the whistle is blown. And visit USLsoccer.com for more details about ESPN Plus and the new streaming site for the USL. And hard challenge out in the open field. We've seen a fairly calm match so far. It just went over, just whipped him, but a good job by Bion Bajab to jump on over it. Schmidt gives it away, a turnover. Francisco Narbonne, who started in the backfield a week ago because the Sounders, too, were depleted due to the GA Cup with a lot of the academy players not playing. And then the U-20s, where Sam Rogers is a part of that. And so Sam Rogers was out, and so Narbonne, typically a midfielder, was called in. And a big hit on Vian Bajab, and he's holding his head here. And uh, that is never a good sign, as he uh, might have taken a shot to the side of the head here from Ulissi. That looks like just a 50-50 challenge between Ulissi and Bijev right here. Both going up fair. Maybe a bit of an elbow, maybe a bit of an arm. Yeah, always a scary thing with the head. The referee does what he needs to do to calm things down, slow it down, and make sure Bijev's okay, which looks like he is, which is good news for Sacramento. Sacramento going to pressure up high and with the field being so wet in the home opener, San Antonio, a very similar situation where it rained all week. Sacramento elected not to put a lot of pressure on, and San Antonio did, and San Antonio paid for it. Uh, what do you think we'll see here tonight from Sacramento as the Sounders, too, looking to make something happen? Here's Olsen moving forward, looking for his right foot, poked away by Sacramento for a moment, just outside the area to the right side. Here comes Ulissi. Ulissi working in to his left foot, a big, strong strike, and it's just beyond the reach of Josh Cohen. Pretty good effort there from the right back. Ulisi coming up. Does a good job coming onto that left foot. A good strike. Still, I think Sacramento needs to get the pressure to get Ulisi's head down a little quicker. Jo Justin Schmidt over there on the left net left back, I think needs to get a little bit tighter. Scary giveaway, scary moment right here. Sacramento able to control it. Long ball from Cohen to the feet. Of Nisha slips up. You can see some of that water being sprayed up, and typically the sprinklers are put on right before the match starts. It was not done here tonight, just for the reason as we talked about with so much water on the field. Here's Felix Jacob 
The 19-year-old from Cameroon, low ball cross set in, gets it right back, he'll try it again. Schmidt, the ball sent weirdly behind the goal there. Kevin, with a uh, odd look on your face there. Yeah, looks like trying to wrap his foot around that ball for a service, just technique lets him down a little bit. They see Sacramento, I mean, if we saw that San Antonio game, and now Sacramento seems to be trying to play out of the back, and with the pitch in the situation that it is, need to be wary about that, because the ball could get stuck in a pool of water very easily. Select is the official soccer ball of the USL for the latest select products and special offers. Visit selectsportamerica.com. Receive free shipping on orders over $50. So how does the wet field play the part of Sacramento, what they're trying to do? Because Simon Elliott said that he wanted to be aggressive, come out positive, make, limit the mistakes, and, and not be afraid to take chances. However, what do you see here from Sacramento? A little piece of skill here by Wilson Nishaw, just not connecting up front. Broken up by Sam Rogers. Quick touch from Bajeb, cutting back. First touch for Iwasa. Iwasa looking for his third goal on season. Crowd was ready to erupt in the 14th minute. That's a great piece of play right there. Adam Moffitt combining with Bajeb, and Bajeb, nice little one-touch layoff to Kamawasa, and that's where you want Kamawasa. Great little turn, a good touch. The final strike lets him down, but love seeing Kamawasa in that position on the field. Silly giveaway by Seattle. Sacramento should keep the foot on the gas here. Throwing from Iwasa. Aliman will take it back. But that, that sequence a second ago with Iwasa that ended with an Iwasa shot. I mean, that's quick ball movement. A good, good ball here line. from Gomez. Looking for Nisha. Nisha lets it through. Here coming to find Bijev. Is Iwasa was just a step in front of him. Good recovery by the Sounders, too. Battling. And Jeremy Hall will pick up a foul. Felix Chankum, and that's a veteran move there, but Chankum uh, may be whistled, and it is against Chankum. Good battle in the midfield between those two. Just a silly giveaway right there by, by Tainter. But see that the battle between Chankum and Hall, I think we're going to see a lot of that. See a pretty spry young forward, Felix Chankum, and that's always going to probably mean a full day's work for Jeremy Hall and Mitchell Tainter dealing with the youthful energy in <laughs> Felix Chankum. Chankum. It's not an envious position right now, in my opinion, for those two. Chankum has five shots on the season, has a goal, does not lead the team. As that's David Estrada, who's on the bench tonight. But Chankum came over from Cameroon when Ezra Hedrickson was the head man for Seattle. But he's worked his way into the starting 11 and made his USL debut a year ago against Sacramento on March 22nd. But now it's John Hutchinson, his first season at the helm of S2, was the assistant under Hendrickson. He's Australian native, played a couple years professionally, but has worked his way. And now at the USL level, trying to lead a team that has struggled over the last several seasons. Made the playoffs in their first year, but the last two have not gone as planned. It's been more of a development mentality, however, than what you see in San Antonio, Sacramento where the cup is the final goal. Heavy touch here. So with Justin Schmidt playing that left back position and Mitchell Tainer in that center back position, a, a different lineup here on the left side who they have not paired together yet this year. What can you expect from them, Kevin, and what are you hoping? Yeah, I hope they just fit in nicely. It shouldn't be that big of an issue. Just Tainter's just been heavy on all these touches the last few minutes. Needs to be a little bit better with this distribution out of the back. But they should be able to cover uh, a pair fine. I think the biggest thing they got to worry about is when one goes, one needs to cover. So that's that's the, the one concern that I would have with those guys not playing together. But that's still kind of schoolboy stuff that they should be able to figure out quickly out there. Just going to be interesting to see if Justin, if Justin gonna be, Schmidt is going to be the guy that's flying up that left side, getting himself involved in the attack or not, or if he's going to be more defensive-minded here tonight. Schmidt dealing with an injury in preseason, starting to get more action here and good depth for Simon Elliott Club. Aliman pokes it up. Elliman trying to make something happen. Just in between there, couldn't find Bajeva as he had hoped. And now here's Jaime Villarreal. Ball movement right here. See, this is one and two touch. This is what Sacramento, when, when things go well, they're moving the ball quickly. When things, the way they start to break down and start to struggle is when guys start taking three or four touches on the ball. Gets it back to Cohen. Cohen trying to find Gomez. Good athletic move by Gomez to keep it in play. And sending it out is Seattle. However, made last touch by number two, Shannon Gomez. 
We've seen some flashes up front of combination play between the likes of Bijev, Iwasa, and Aliman. So a good sign here in the first 15 minutes. Just need to keep trying, keep fighting, and keep moving the ball quickly. For all our Indomitable season ticket holders, if you still haven't picked up your ID and limited edition scarf, contact the club, 307-6100. Combination here, Wilson Nisha spinning around. Gomez able to find it. Gomez, deep cross. Bajev is there. Can he keep it in play? And it sails away from him. Yeah, that right side of the pitch, the eastern side of the field here tonight, seems to be the most impacted with water. And you see a lot of touches. Probably pretty heavy as guys are anticipating maybe having some water slow the ball down. Just another little wrinkle storyline in this game here to worry about. How does it impact the strikers in this position? This is a, a club that's trying to still figure each other out. I mean, really, it's a, if you're playing on the flanks, you're waiting. If, if you're Wilson Eshaw, you're waiting for the second half. <laughs> you don't want to get, want to get <laughs> off that side as quickly as possible. Same thing with. With Shannon Gomez over there, great turn. Through here, Chankum trying to chase it. Tackle hard by Mitchell. Tainer Cohen clears it away. The whistle comes in late, and a free kick coming up is Mitchell Tainer with a tough challenge against Felix Chankum. This could be red, by the way. Sacramento's going to be very lucky to get away. And you saw Tainer size up Chankum from a few steps away. Get another look. You see, you know, you know he's going down. Late tackle, last man, what colors it's red. And it's a red card for Mitchell Tainer. So the game plan for Simon Elliott in the Sacramento Republic has changed in a blink of an eye. And a red card in the 20th minute against Mitchell Tainer. And Jeremy Hall is beside himself after the call from the referee, Michael Ratchuk. Yeah, I mean, Ratchuk by, by the book, I think he's probably right. It's the last man, last defender from behind. It's like Tainer, I mean, you saw him size it up, Rob, from a few steps away. A red card was issued in the and I tell you what, that's going to lead to a lot of tactical four. decisions Mitchell here. You see Tainter. Simon Elliott calling over Kamawasa and Adam Moffat talking about what's going to happen. Is Probably that, two up top. They put Adam Moffat back. Probably bring Adam Moffat back. Maybe bring... You know, Bijev in the middle now of Villarreal and leave Nisha and Awasa up top and have Aliman come back. But definitely I think the decision's gonna be to have Adam Moffat to go back. Adam's got some central back, central defending experience, can fill in that position no problem. Adam Moffat, 31 years of age. Several years in MLS as well, and now a bit of shoving taking place among the Sounders in the Republic, led by Cameron Awasa. And got a conversation. Activity, activity on the bench, too, with Carlos Rodriguez, who may be uh, uh, coming in, see how this settles down in the next couple of minutes. First red card of the season for Sacramento, and it comes at a tough time as the Republic have dominated this series and now give a chance to a young Sounders 2 team to put one in the board. Whistle blows from Radchuk. It looks like it could be Hines, and it's going to be laid up. As Olsen made a run, it will be Hines in the left foot, struck. And it will be a corner kick coming up, and the crowd likes the effort from Sacramento. But to remind you now, it is just 10 men on the field for the Republic the rest of the way. Not the best effort there in that set piece by Nick Hines. Hines will take it again, the second corner of the after, or the evening, I should say, for the Sounders, too. The University of Akron product spent two years in the famed soccer university. Ball is sent in low, first tap. Sent away, Sacramento still a little bit of trouble. Can they clear it away? It's Ali Mun with a high kick and out of play a throw for the Sounders too. At least he's got a long throw here, so Sacramento's gotta be mindful as well. And it still looks like some disorganization. To the head of Moffitt, sorry. Settling, Ulisi.
And a bit of a battle between Schmidt and Chankum again. Chankum has got some size, pretty good pace as well, and able to draw a red card against Mitchell Tainer and having a big impact in this one here in week number four for the Republic. I just saw the pace by Chankum. Just one step quicker than, than Tainter. And I've been in that situation before where you go to make it, you commit fully. And, Ch and Chankum was just, like I said, a step faster. Good challenge he here by Ibijev. Come all the way up to be his Wilson knee shot to make a play. Awasa able to recover. Shannon Gomez overlapping. Gomez just outside the 18, tries to send across. And here's Aliman. Not there in time as Sari able to recover, but Sacramento not quite done yet. Hines looking to turn the corner on Gomez. Gomez with a hard challenge. And Seattle will look to start quickly. But for Sacramento here, Kevin, 10 men on the field, a disadvantage here. How do they still look to get one in the back of the net? Well, you got to forget that you have 10 men on the field in certain respects that you're going to be working harder than, than your opposition. And continue to try to stick to this game plan that's going to be obviously shifted a little bit. And ultimately what it means is everyone's going to have to work a little bit harder. It's Aliman, just another silly giveaway. Shielding there, and a foul is drawn, and it's against Adam Moffitt. Adam Moffitt has moved back to the center back position. Iwasa has dropped as well. And you'll see almost become a 4-3-2 for Sacramento tactically. Push there by Iwasa, and then... And that may have been the first call. Adam Moffitt coming in, but... A little bit of a slow spot. Ball dropped in. Chance for Cohen. Cohen able to up and get it. We'll hear exclusive stories directly from the USL players and USLsoccer.coms from the pitch with written and video content that provides unfiltered access and a first-person look at the professional game and players' everyday lives. Rogers finding Olsen. Olsen, versatile player for the Sounders, too. Someone they can put up top, play in the midfield. 21 years of age. The Sounders staff is called a player with maybe the best IQ on this Sounders 2 side. Sam Fowler, we mentioned in the pregame, getting his first start goalkeeper tonight. His debut was a rough one against the Real Monarchs, who were the best team in the USL during the regular season. A 4-1 defeat. Good run here. Hines making a good opportunity, trying to find a teammate, and it's popped up and out of play. Sacramento able to recover. It's Jeremy Hall. They see the field conditions right there playing a factor. But it's going to be a long night. It means 70 minutes, 65 minutes to go. Down a man, I mean, what, what, Rob, you asked the question, what do you do? I mean, ultimately, it's just going to be, you have to, you know, grit your teeth and bear it and work hard. Do a lot of chasing. Well, Trey Sari this time with the right foot. Lobs one into the six. It's bouncing around. Good chance for Seattle. Still in there. It's Josh Cohen to come up and pick it up. The 25-year-old from Mountain View, California, making his fourth consecutive start for the Republic to start the year. Josh Cohen sending. Interesting to see Bajev playing a little bit back to goal here. And with Christian Isley on the bench, we could see Isley a bit sooner now with Mitchell Tainer hit with that red card. That came in the 20th minute of the Republic playing with just 10 men for the rest of the way. Usman back to Francisco Narbonne. Seattle started the year with a victory against Portland 2-1 and have dropped the last two. Moving forward is Olsen to the right side. Ulisi being marked by Schmidt. Lays it up. Iwasa puts a foot in there and able to win the ball for the Republic. Aliman being tugged from behind and the assistant referee blows for a foul. See Simon still kind of barking orders a little bit tactically. A 
little miscommunication between Bajev and Schmidt. Schmidt gives it right back. I mean, I mean, the best thing to do here, what you typically see, Rob, is just, just drop back into a 4-4-1. Like Kamal Wasson has come back in the middle of the pitch with Villarreal, lead Bajev high. Nisha out wide. Nisha out wide, and Aliman out wide on the other side as well. And Bajev's creativity on the ball, his calmness in the 18. Another best place to put him up top in this situation. Uh, you know, right now, maybe it could be interesting to see, like, you know, uh, why, not, why not put a Wasa up there and try to break with the Wasa and let him get the ball and just drive it and try to nick a goal rather than Bijev. Bijev. Here's a chance for a counter for Sacramento. It's going to be a long night if this is going to be the game plan, but really. Seems like the Republic a little bit discombobulated with themselves, not quite sure where to go. Now with their tactical alignment a little bit out of sorts. Yeah, a little bit out of sorts right now. Still see, I mean, the decision should have been made quickly by Simon. It looks like he's still barking orders in direction on where it looks like he wants Nisha. It looks, it looks like he keeps trying to get him to tuck in further. A lot of space out on the wings for Seattle, moving quickly again, showing some pace. Ulissi to the middle of the park it goes. A battle ensues between the two sides. It'll be the Republic to come away with it. Aliman not able to break free quick enough. And now Jaime Virial has to look to get back. Denzel Ulissi, 19-year-old from Haiti, battling with Owasa, wins the ball back. To the right side he goes. Schmidt in a familiar position here this evening as there's been a lot of space for the right back and the wings to get in that final third. L will switch the field. The tough part about that red card is not only do you lose Mitchell Tainer tonight, you move, you lose him next week against Las Vegas on the road. And with Cole Seiler hurt, it could be a bit of trouble. Bouncing around looking for something was Chakum. And with injuries already plaguing the back line for Sacramento, not a good sign for Simon Elliott and the Republic staff. No, it just means another man down. Big is, I think, Elliot Horn is hopefully going to be back in the next couple weeks. He was taking shots on goal today, which is a very good sign. Ball lofted up over the top. Hall has to get back, just gets his head to it. And a nervous moment for the Republic fans here. Move the ball. This is where it gets so easy to try to take your break as a Republic player after you've been chasing for the last 10 minutes. Battling, and a foul is drawn. Nicely done, and we may see a booking here coming to Rodriguez, and he gets a yellow card, and that's the second card of the evening. And that yellow card comes in the 32nd minute. A foul there, foul first, and then just a really tough late challenge. Not a late challenge, maybe studs up. Comes in, you know, honestly, Rob, I don't know how much of a foul there really was there. And if there was, definitely don't feel that that might have been a cautionable offense. So now number 92, Rodrigue L, the 20-year-old Cameroonian, has to be a bit cautious the rest of the way, especially the center back position. I'm Simon Elliott, you're going out just trying to make this a 10 v 10. Yeah, these situations sometimes too, referees get a little looser with their cards, now knowing that they've already kind of broken the dam with that red card. Sacramento hit with a red card in the 20th minute. Mitchell Tainer with a hard challenge on Chankum, double lofts it up over the top. Here a service, ball let in. Schmidt tried to curl one back in. A good weighted ball from Moffat to start it. Couldn't can finish off. Looking for a handball, the flag goes up late against Chankum, and they will catch it. And so a handball in the middle of the park. Set pieces have to be the friend uh, for the Republic going forward. 
So Moffitt trying to take a shot there. So Moffitt trying to sneak it through. Moffitt, and it's L who just got the yellow card. Moffitt's not bashful, man. The USL's official Twitter feed keeps you up to date with news, live game updates, and highlights from around the league 24 7. Hello at USL on Twitter. Battle here, but Jev much more active since Tainer went out with that red card. And really, Rob, right now, still want to see Sacramento when they do have the ball. Move the ball quickly, one and two touch. Find little triangles around the field, but move it quickly. Taking the long term view on this. This is a good learning tool for Sacramento to play with 10 men early on in the season, see what they're made of. Shannon Gomez making a good run against Usman. It'll be a goal kick for Seattle. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's a, it's a good experience right here. I, I think that, you know, ultimately there's going to be challenges every week that you're going to face. And the more you face them, the better you're going to be next time. And good to see this early in the season. And still, I mean, 0-0, zero, zero, there's still a chance for you to come out here and get a result. And a reminder, but, this is a Seattle side that has yet to post even a point here in five tries. Oh, I'll tell you what, a red card in the 20th minute. Well, here's Chankum just outside the 18, lofts one in, can't find a teammate. Well, John, well done there by Gomez. But you're right, a red card gives you a little bit more of a probability well, to get a point. Especially with 70, you know, 70 minutes left in the match to play. It's a different situation if that red card happens in the 80th minute. You can just park the bus a little bit. It still looks, I think Sacramento's kind of playing a 4 3 2. Making a run, Hopiao. The Hawaiian native challenge from Schmidt. It's a great play right there. Great defending by, de defending by Schmidt. But it looks like Sacramento, they're holding with Owasa as well as Villarreal and Nisha, and giving Aliman and Bijev kind of some freedom up front. Get a look right here, it's just good defending by Justin Schmidt, committing at the right time, going down strong tackle. The wind is starting to calm down a little bit. It's fairly breezy at the beginning of this one, 60 degrees, but felt a bit cooler here. Moffat, a wild hit. There's Jaime Villarreal. Nisha all the way up from the other side of the field. It'll be Republic's ball here as a challenge from Elisi. Earns at least a stoppage for the moment. And throw it back to Moffat. Chankum continuing to put pressure and give some chase. And now here comes Nick Hines on Josh Cohen. Could be a little bit of trouble. Just gets it away. Nervous moments. Sacramento having a little bit of trouble along that back line. Wilson, Nisha, and Iwasa there in the middle along with Aliman. Aliman goes down. Now it's Nisha. Sacramento looking to break. They're going to play advantage. Cameron Iwasa through the wet stuff. Shannon Gomez, you can see the spray come up on each of the challenge along that right side. Gomez slips, tries to stay up. The crowd into it, but Seattle able to come away with it. Ball switched across the field. Schmidt almost grabbed that with his two hands. <laughs> Sounders 2, 31 points in 2017, their worst output in their three-year history. 35 the year before that, made the playoffs with 42 points, but lost to Colorado Springs in round one. That was the same year in 2015 where Sacramento lost it here to the LA Galaxy 2. Speaking of LA Galaxy 2 players, Jaime Villarreal, Thought it was a pretty big signing for Sacramento. He's been quiet. He's been put in more of a defensive-minded role here, but a very talented player, good at ball, both of his feet. I think it'd be fair to say we'd like to see more from number 24. I would agree. It might take him a little while to get settled in. It's a good ball. Here's a space. He's on side. Vijev lets it fall down to his feet. Working in. He loves that right foot from this angle. Can try to squeeze it through to Wilson Nisha. Just got enough, and Nisha battling hard with Rodrigo. And L able to win it. 
Love that fight from Wilson Nisha. Chance to keep the attack on. Aliman called for it. Out comes Sam Fowler, who had to make his first play of the night and does it safely. A 17-year-old Sounders Academy product getting the start here his first of the 2018 season. I like that effort, though, from Justin, Justin Schmidt to serve that ball in the box. Aliman was kind of peeling away. And a decent ball actually in by Schmidt as well. So with 10 men playing for Sacramento, they've started to calm down a little bit, Kevin. Seems like they're, they're embracing what they're going to have to do here for the next 60 plus minutes. I think the ball's gotta be their friend. I'm telling you, if they move it quickly, they're gonna have much more chances to go forward, but the ball needs to be moved quickly. Seattle trying to take advantage of Mitchell Tainer's red card. Hines brings it down into the box it comes. Here is a little bit of trouble. Moffitt clears it away, but Jeff being held from behind, but Jeff trying to push it through. Sam Fowler way outside his line. The Sounders two recover, and a late whistle is blown, but Sacramento nearly able to take advantage of a big mistake in the midfield, and then Sam Fowler coming way out of his box. And I think that's tactically shows why Simon Elliott wants to have two guys up top. It's a chance right there, a quick little break, Bijev gets the ball, is able to look for somebody else up there. He's not alone on an island. He's got Aliman up there with him. And it sparks some life in the Tower Bridge Battalion of the fans here who know the Republic are facing a tough tax down to men. Good spacing for the Republic. Awasa moving forward. Lays it up to Gomez. Gomez calling for a peel off. He's got one friendly in the middle. It's Aaron Awasa that just missed the bar. Right post snuck on the outside, and the crowd was ready, and the applause, the effort. Goldthwaite, you know that was one the Republic should have had. A great buildup. They called it from the midfield, and it worked to perfection. The only part missing was the goal scored. Yeah, it's a great run, great buildup by Kamawasa. Not the best it balls in the box from, from Gomez. It falls right to the left foot and just off the post. That's a really good look for Cam Watson. Love to see him play that ball out wide and continue that run to get in the box. I don't know if Fowler touched that or not. It was hard to see, but either way, great strike with his, his uh, non-dominant foot and his left foot there for Cameron Watson. And a great job. Gets the ball wide, continues the run, like I mentioned. Great seeing the movement off the ball by Cam Watson right there. A little bit of buzz at Papa Murphy's Park now. Alongside Kevin Goldwood and Rob McAllister, we thank you for joining us here on My58 or online, wherever you may be. 40 minutes in, Sacramento playing down a man, but they're hanging in there. No score between the Republic and the Sounders, too. Sacramento has never yielded a point to the Rave Green here at home. 7-1-1 all time. The only win for the Sounders, too, was the home opener when it was scoreless at the break, and then it was a 4-2 victory for the Sounders two in Seattle. That was a Rodrigo Lopez, Justin Braun led team. Not a single player from that squad here in the lineup tonight for Sacramento. Giveaway, Olsen in the middle of the park. Here's Sari, another youngster with a bright future for the Sounders two. Wearing the captain's armband, but gives it up here. Cameron Awasa trying to find Bajev. Keeps it in safe play, and Bajev able to come back for it. Just couldn't keep it in play. Starting to see the repertoire between Aliman, Iwasa, Bajev, and Wilson Nishan. You got to feel pretty good about this season moving forward. Yeah, I think those guys are starting to figure each other out. Still got a long way to go, but I think, you know, the, the future is bright, and I'm pretty optimistic to think that those guys, if they continue to move the ball quickly, in that final third, they should have some pretty good success. Villarreal, Iwasa, moving forward, chance for Seattle. Peeling off, Chankum, Jeremy Hall's gotta give a bit of chase. Hall and Chankum battling just outside the 18. Now Villarreal comes to help and pushes them into the corner. Good defending by the Sacramento Republic. It will become a corner kick and Chankum is furious at his teammate asking for some help. It's good defending there by Jeremy Hall. Forcing him out, away from goal, no need to dive in. Sets up another corner kick for Seattle. Back post, chance, Cohen. 
Beautifully done by the 25-year-old. Josh Cohen, the all-black hit here tonight. Sends a deep ball with his left foot. Aliman looked for a second chance. Finds to the arms of Sam Fowler. Stakes starting to pile up for the Sounders, too. Aliman with a back heel, trying to find Bajev. Aliman goes down hard. And no whistle, and there it comes. And Francisco Narbonne, and he will receive a yellow card. And it's going to be changed to a red, and it's going against Rodriguez. So unfortunately for Seattle, it did not go against Narbonne. It goes against L. That's his second of the night. And now we're playing 10 v 10 like we talked about 20 minutes ago. Well, this is what I talked about. Sometimes when you get that early red card in these games, the referee becomes a little bit more loose with decisions down the road to try to e e uh, even things out to a certain extent. But if you get another look at this, I'm not even sure if it's Rodriguez that has the foul initially. It looks Narbonne. like it's Narbonne is the really one that's you know initiating the contact. Yes, Rodriguez L is there. Take another look. L steps in a little bit, but really I think Narbonne's the one that instigates that contact. That's just unfortunate for Rodriguez L. Fortunate for Sacramento to be back level here. 10 v 10. And, and a completely new match here, but I mean, ultimately, I think that's unfortunate for Seattle. So just like that, the tactics will have to change for the Sounders, too. Adam Moffitt. B. Riel. Tower Bridge Battalion up and cheering. As this game has new life and new meaning for the Republic. They've had a couple of chances even down a man. But you can't rest now, Kevin. Moffitt looking for Iwasa, headed, moving, is Wilson Nisha toward goal. And Sam Rogers. We're going to add two minutes of stoppage time, and it's brought to you by Rayleigh Something Extra Rewards Program. Earn points every time you shop. Sign up today at Rayleigh's.com. And it's been changed to three minutes now, so three minutes of stoppage time. The extra minute was added because of the red card to Rodriguez. So now both teams playing with 10 men here this evening. Sacramento earning Mitchell Tainer a red card in the 20th. Here's Bajev, lets it slide through. Wilson Nisha, a little side heel, trying to find Bajev. And then Rodriguez with a yellow in the 32nd, and then 11 minutes later would get another. And that's where we are here with 10 v 10. Whistle blows. Able to draw the fouls beyond the Jeff. Part of your Chevy Keys, the match at first five and final five for Sacramento. What's your point of attack? What is your tactics here in the final moments? The final moments really for me is to get out of here 0-0. Zero, zero. Lofted ball in, looking for Aliman. Don't concede here. It's the last thing you want to do, play smart conservative soccer here the last couple minutes, last couple seconds, and get out of here and regroup. And come out here for that second half. Villarreal. Sacramento will play the possession game here. A switch from Hall. A little heavy on the touch as Schmidt gave a run. Breezy night in the capital city. Fowler sends it in, whistle likely to come at any moment now. Each team trying to get away without conceding here in the final moments of the first half. And that is the whistle. 
from the referee, Michael Ratchuk. So after 45 minutes and some change at Papa Murphy's Park, both sides will go to the locker room scoreless. Both will also go down a man and head back coming up with just 10 apiece as it's Tainer and Rodrigo L who go out each with red cards of the first 45. We'll have your highlights and your stats in a feature you won't want to miss coming up here in the halftime. Don't go away. When someone else depends on you, the question of healthcare can stop you in your tracks. But candidly, it all really comes down to one big question. Who offers the very best healthcare? UC Davis Health. Visit answers.ucdavis.edu. During open enrollment, all those questions often lead only to confusion. But when you stop and ask who provides the very best healthcare, suddenly it all becomes clear. UC Davis Health. Visit answers.ucdavis.edu. Spring is coming. Time to save on a new Toyota. Many models come with... Toyota Safety Sense. Standard. Now get up to $2,000 down payment match on a new Corolla or CHR. Toyota. Let's go places. Papa Murphy's presents a fresh take on fresh. Here's the deal. If it comes from a freezer, not fresh. Box, not fresh. Bag, not fresh. Fresh means just chopped vegetables. Cheese grated by us daily. Fresh means we don't even have ovens. Because you have an oven. So you can feel good about feeding it to your... Home bacon XL NY pizza topped with giant pepperoni and ground sausage on an extra large foldable New York style crust. Just $8. Papa Murphy's. Love at 425 degrees. The difference between possible and impossible? It's a person who believes they can, surrounded and supported by others, by us, who believe it too. U.S. Bank, the power of possible. Welcome back to Papa Murphy's Park, alongside Kevin Goldthwait, Rob McAllister, at the break here. And let's take a look at our first half stats and really not a lot of action between these two time, two teams in the first half. But Kevin, what we did see uh, were some cards thrown and uh, two yellow cards for Seattle, both against Rodrigo and the one red card in the 20th minute against Mitchell Tainter. But overall, not a lot to take from these stats. Yeah, not a lot of fireworks at the end of the pitch, but a lot of fireworks in the middle of the pitch with these uh, the red cards being seen here in the first half. And obviously completely uh, uh, tips this game on its head and a lot of things to be discussed here at halftime. Who does this now put in advantage? Is Sacramento's advantage playing 10 v 10? I mean, it's back to an even game where uh, both staff, you know, they're going to go in there and the, the figure out tactically what needs to be done. I don't know if anyone has an advantage at this point in time. It's going to be interesting to see who can come out tactically and figure this out the quickest. Well, let's take a look down our NorCal Honda highlights as uh, we begin with Seattle getting aggressive early on. It would be a match between two sides of Seattle uh, looking for their first victory here at Papa Murphy's Park ever. And they had a good chance early on from Elisi. Yeah, Elisi coming down the left. Still Sacramento needs to close that down much better. Can't allow someone to just travel up to the top of your 18-yard box and have a strike. And so Elisi, the right back, good left foot, but fortunately for Republic and it's their fans, uh, did not connect. Sacramento, however, quick touch and a good opportunity, but again, couldn't find that. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the best chance Sacramento had in this first half. Really, the goalkeepers on both sides, Cohen and Fowler, really weren't challenged much at all. Well, here's a chance for Seattle. Looked like they were going to break with Chinkum going, and Tainer comes in hard. Yeah, that's a late, hard challenge. You see Tainer sizing it up right here. It goes down, fully committed, but just a quicker, quicker step there by Chinkum and the red card shown. And there is the red card, and it would not be for much longer that it would be an even game, but Sacramento would be battling. Well, 10 men, a lot of pressure coming. Cohen just able to evade Nick Hines in that final moment. That was a lot closer on the replay than it looked. And in here, the best buildup we saw from Sacramento. Yeah, you're right, this is, this is actually the best chance here. 
Kamawasa comes off his foot. You can see it's a great little ball out wide. You see Cam just continues his run into the box. But even watch his look after he hits that ball. He thinks it's in right there. He's, he's run into the corner flag ready to celebrate. Just yep. hits off that post. Gavin Owasa, two goals on the season, looking for his third, but in the final play, uh, that would be a decider in this one. Rodrigue L with the red card. Probably should have been the yellow for uh, Narbonne. Narbonne somehow escapes it. It goes to L, and now we're both playing 10 versus 10 here for the second half of play. Well, in celebration of Art Night here at Papa Murphy's Park, our very own Cole Seiler channeled his inner Bob Ross to draw a happy little portrait of his teammate, Josh Cohen. Let's take a look. We'll check our game and have the winners here shortly. Hey there, Republic fans. Today, Josh and Co and I are gonna do a little arts and crafts. All right, Josh, now give me a give me a little smile. Give me a smile there. That's nice. That's really good, yeah. Now act like you just made a big save for me, Josh. There you go, I like that face. You look fierce there. Okay, don't do that face anymore. Um, acting like uh, you're ordering people on a corner kick. Organizing. There you go. I like that. That's a good one right there. Okay. Act like you're congratulating one of your teammates after a big save. Oh, I could save. All right. Don't touch me. Little smile now. Little smile. Oh, there they are. It's pearly white. That's real nice. What do you think? Oh, wow. That's pretty good. Those are the dots I used right ah, there. Ah, little the, stippling? The, yes, exactly, good. the dot finish, like a Monet. Should we, uh, should we show everyone? Yeah, let's show the fans. Look at that. Beautiful art, ladies and gentlemen, courtesy of Cole Seiler. Thank you, guys. Hi, we're being joined today by Jake Edwards, president of the USL. He's getting ready to kick off an exciting 2018 season. Jake, thank you very much for joining us today. Great, my pleasure. You know, we're getting ready to kick off the 2018 USL season, but this year has also been very crucial for uh, the successful launch of USL Division Three. Uh, talk to us about, uh, you know, the league and kind of the steps that are taking place to get ready to kick a ball with them next year. Yeah, that's a great deal of work that's gone into that uh, so far. It's been a two-year project and we're, we're kicking off in 19. Um, very excited. Uh, it's a significantly important step that we're taking here because uh, there needs to be more professional soccer. There are a significant number of communities that, and fans that don't have access to a professional team of their own. Uh, and uh, there's an opportunity there to go into these uh, communities. Uh, we want professional soccer clubs that are going to be here for many years to come. And we'll follow the same model with, uh, with uh, the right ownership, you know, with the right venue, um, and with, with, and with uh, you know, great professional players. Uh, now between the two professional divisions uh, and also with our pre-professional uh, league, our, our PDL, our Elite Amateur Under-23 League. Now with the three uh, properties, you'll actually see more integration of these leagues. Division 3 is going to have a huge impact on the growth of the sport. What, is, what does Jake as president think about when you're looking ahead for the next decade? What are some initiatives that you, uh, you, know, you, you kind of see on the horizon? Uh, we set a long-term uh, strategic plan out uh, that took us through 2020. Some of those projects are going to carry on uh, beyond that. Um, there'll be some more expansion into the USL for Division 3. It's the uh, continuation of our soccer-specific stadium push to get all of our teams uh, playing in those venues. Again, continue to focus on the competition level, um, continue to attract uh, quality players and world-class stars into the league uh, and coaches as well. Um, you know, a large part of what we're going to be focusing now is on the commercial growth and the media growth of the of the league. Um, as we've built significant interest and significant quality, uh, and there's a lot of people that want the content now, and so we're going to be um, unveiling a lot of new partners uh, over the over the coming uh, uh, 12 to 24 months. So there's a big area of focus there for the league, uh, and ultimately the fans. You know, keep servicing the fans, keep engaging with the fans, keep giving the fans. Uh, you know, uh, more and more uh, uh, great professional soccer for them to come out and support. With my son, who's a he's an athlete, he plays a lot of sports. So he and I talk welcome about back to Papa Murphy's Park, Park alongside Kevin Goldthwait and Rob McAllister. No score after 45 minutes of action, but uh, chippy match, no doubt about it. Uh, we've got a couple of news and notes from around the USL. Let's take a look here. It's been uh, a couple of weeks where teams at the top 
have played quite well. 10 unbeaten teams, uh, five from each conference so far, but uh, it's been Justin Braun's team uh, who has had a, a bit of surprise in the USL, the Indy 11 from the NASL a season ago, and uh, they're pulling out some pretty good crowds in Indianapolis. 17,000 at Lucas Oil, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. And so let's take a look now, our goal of the week presented by Select and devoted by many of you, the fans as well. Let's take a clean look at this. It's been a, a good one. It's Atlanta's Lagos Kunga with just an absolute beauty of a strike and baiting here and was all Atlanta in this match here. Somehow sneaks that in. Yeah. <laughs> Great piece of skill here. Just finds the wickets. Probably the only area really where that ball can go in and finds a space and puts it back in the net. And then for our save of the week, it's a familiar face. Evan Newton of Cincinnati, formerly of the Sacramento Republic the last few years, and on a set piece here, and just guessed properly, and big ups, FC Cincinnati fans, loving that effort by Evan Newton. We saw him do a couple of those, and none bigger than the playoffs and the penalty kicks against the Real Monarchs a season ago. So, good shot there for Evan Newton and Lagos Kung. And it's art night here at Sacramento. Some incredible murals for the big war, uh, walls event. And uh, you got to come see it. Wide open walls, beautiful stuff taking place here at Paint to Park. And uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back, upcoming schedules, and we'll get this second half started for you here from Papa Murphy's Park on the My 58. Spring is coming. Time to save on a new Toyota. Plus, every new Toyota comes with our no-cost maintenance plan. No cost. Get 0% financing for 60 months on the restyled Camry or lease one for just $199 a month. Toyota, let's go places. At U.S. Bank, we believe one small change can echo throughout an entire community. That's why we proudly support, invest, and volunteer in communities like yours. Because the changes we make today... Can you hear me? ...shape the possibilities of tomorrow. U.S. Bank. The power of possible. So from the two trucks over here, I want you to pick a new truck for your mom or dad, knowing that they could possibly pass it down to you one day. Cool. But before you decide, you should know that Chevy Silverados are the most dependable, longest lasting, full-size pickups on the road, which means that Ford F-150s are not. <laughs> which truck would you pick? The Chevy. The Chevy? The Chevy. There you go. Boom. That was obvious. <laughs> that person looks cooler. No doubt about it. Now they know what to get me. <laughs> Every day, there are millions of stories, but the most important are the stories that impact you. Whether it's keeping your family safe. These are the areas under a high alert because we're- Understanding changes to your world. They could end up causing taxpayers more money, thousands- Or figuring out what the future holds. It just may be bringing new jobs to Sacramento. Start At 10 o'clock, we take more time to focus on the details that impact you most. KCRA 3 News at 10 on My58, where the news comes first. Anniversary, well, let's take a look at our Western also, Health Advantage upcoming Milo schedule. And a couple of good matches coming up here in the so month of April for the Sacramento Republic. Jack First Anderson time ever, we'll take on the expansion team, the Las Vegas Lights, and then a uh, couple of matches at home to round out April. And uh, Sacramento, I think they pick up points here tonight, or up point. Also, uh, they could easily Saturday. run back here Mike to take on Shawnee. Seattle and Tacoma on May 6th and still be undefeated. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot to be determined yet, but I mean, there's a schedule right here that looks pretty good for Sacramento, pretty favorable, week, 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 week. So we'll see what happens here tonight in the next 45 minutes, but I think it, it, it's, it's uh, scheduling out nicely for Sacramento. It's not going to be as easy for the Sounders, too, a young team of course, trying to pick up some points after being one and two start on the year. Got a couple at home, however, and then uh, they'll be on the road, and then they're going to host a couple of more in the Sacramento again, and then uh, their big rival, the Timbers, too. That's coming up on May 12th. 
And uh, I will say, for those of you who saw the Bob Ross feature with Cole Seiler and the goalkeeper Josh Cohen, I have a feeling, Kevin, that Cole Seiler may not be as a good of artist that we're led to believe here in this in this featurette that was shown at halftime. I don't know. He looks like a very uh, sensual, arti artistic type person, Ross. Very, very crafty young very fellow. Crafty, indeed. yes. yes in touch so. with his artistic side. <laughs> uh, Cole Seiler not in the lineup tonight, uh, dealing with a, a groin injury. Hoping to have him back soon and, and talking with Todd Donovan and, and the staff. They said, you know, some of these guys are just starting to feel some of the aches from preseason. They had a short run. They're trying to get ready. A lot of guys tend to overtrain, and, and it's something that I don't think a lot of people think of, but young guys, it happens a lot. It happened to Cameron Owasa the season ago when he got picked up by Sporting KC. He said he overtrained, trying to get ready, wanted to make the MLS roster, and it ended up, you know, having that hamstring that kept him out for six weeks. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword, man. Sometimes you can just burn yourself out too quickly that fine line of determining what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And that's part of professionalism. And every player is different. And every player needs to figure out what works for them and what doesn't work. So the Sounders, too, had a couple of opportunities in that first 45 minutes after Mitchell Tainer went down with a red card in the 20th minute. So he was shown off. And then Sacramento would play another 24 minutes before it would be evened up again as Rodriguez picked up his second red card. And so now we have two teams playing with 10 men as Sacramento looking for a quick start. And tactically, we see both teams trying to make changes and could be Seattle playing just three in the back, however. Yeah, it looks like Seattle might be going with three in the back. Here's Hines. He was aggressive in that first 45, has great pace, has been a pain for Jeremy Hall. And Adam Moffitt in that first 45 to the right side. At least he. As we get away here, another match at Papa Murphy's Park. A cooler night in April. Sam Rogers has moved out a bit wide here. What could be a 3-1, almost 2-1 for the Sounders. We saw what Nick Hines could do. We saw what Felix Chankum can do. I'm a little surprised we didn't see much of Shannon Hopial, a young player that had a real big impact in that first season with the Sounders too. Just 19 years old, however. But only a couple, and Hines. only a real, uh, you know, a couple moments from Hopial. So fouls conceded by Sacramento, but still, you see the, the skill and the talent in Hopi Al, just a matter of him getting the ball more consistently at his feet in the second half and, and making the right decisions and, and linking up better with his, with his teammates. They're expecting to have him play more minutes here in 2018. Just two appearances in 2016, slowly building him up. Good ball from Jeremy Hall, finding Aliman. Aliman, here's Bajev, is he onside, peeling away. Into the 18 he goes, battling with Sam Rogers. Rogers holding on to the back here as Bajev trying to find some space. Bajev will give it a go. And it's Ibrahim Usman. The two, Aliman and Bijev almost connect. That ball out to Bijev just a little bit heavy. Aliman's battling with Belisi on his shoulder trying to get the ball off to, to Bijev. Does a good job. A decent little play by Sacramento. With 10 men, how does this affect substitutions for both teams? Neither have made a substitution in that first half. Yeah, I mean, it just depends tactically going forward what the game, how it unfolds. Christian Heisley not in the first 11 tonight. Ball set in hard, giving chases. Alima with a quick touch, a tough ball, and the touch. Poked up high on him, but Aliman was right there with his left foot. That's a great ball in once again by Justin Schmidt. Really difficult ball to handle for Aliman. Bouncing right in front of you. You know, look, a great ball in the box. And that ball's just a little bit behind Kevin Aliman. Tough for him to try to bring that thing under the crossbar, or put it on target. But I like the run, and I like the ball in. 
Those two guys connected. Hopi out comes in strong to Adam Moffitt, and I would not be surprised if he is booked here as Hopi Al was going for goal. And Adam Moffitt took a brunt one, and Hopi Al was saying that Moffitt raised his leg. Adam Moffitt's just baiting this guy. <laughs> Moffitt's trying to clear the ball. Hopi Al's going in. I think Moffitt conveniently places his foot somewhere in the stomach of Hopi Al, and Hopi Al takes offense to him and pushes him over, but. That's just the veteran savviness by, by Adam Moffitt. So let's see what Michael Radchuk may have seen. And Moffitt kept his foot up after clearing it away. And Radchuk decides not to pull out a card. Fans showing their displeasure with a bit of booze, but either way, Moffitt and Hopi all seem to be okay. Owasa. Looking to make some moves against Ray Sari. But Jeff along the touchline. He loves that angle. Chance for Sacramento. Quick touch, but Jeff tries to bring it down. That's a great ball by Iwasa and a good piece of skill. Once again, we talked about early in the in the broadcast here, Rob, that inverted winger with Bijev on the left side coming into his right foot. We've got a glimpse of it right there and a good ball by Kamawasa back to Bajev, but Bajev just can't bring it down. Sacramento's chances are, are increasing, but they have not been able to convert. That's a great ball. Bajev knows he needs to do better with that. But Bajev, 25 years of age, we talked about the stories where he made big impacts in England. He's had his chances with Portland. Here he is with Sacramento at eight, 25 years of age. You gotta feel like this is a, a key season for him if he wants to move up to MLS and beyond. Yeah, at this point, 25 years old, you gotta start making some. Here's Chankum giving some chase. Chankum just 19 years of age. Good tackle. Lays it back for Usman, Sacramento, and it's Aliman. But Jeb would have been offside. And still giving a little bit of pressure, and Sam Fowler is going to clear it up the field. But going back to Vian Bajev, he came to Sacramento on loan from Portland after scoring seven goals a season ago, added two more at the end of last year, and then signed in the offseason. Yeah, I think this season is, is, is really crucial for him. A slip right here. It's crucial for him to come out and put together a good season. Iwasa to Gomez. Gomez lays it in, chance for Iwasa. And slipping on the backside again was Bajab. The field, we talked about the conditions being a bit wet because of all the rain and the grounds crew. And now it's Bajab still battling, keeps it in place somehow. It's Bajab still on his feet. Bajab just outside the 18, pokes it through a nifty little move. Cameron Iwasa can he get there. Here's Nisha firing it back up over the bar. And last touch. Dry Nisha. So a whole combination of opportunities for Sacramento, and they still can't find target. But yeah, find some wickets. Action. Find some wickets right there by Hope and Al. Little layoff. Like to see Wilson Nisha just take a little bit off that and find target. Just a little shorter swing, more compact swing. So there's a, an opportunity, I guess, where the wet turf play to Bajev's benefit. Big strong challenge from Jeremy Hall. Some silly foul by Hall. He needs to just work his feet, stand him up. So nearly two inches of rain, and the grounds crew are putting out some absorbent out on the turf here tonight. Trying to dry things up, and it's just drenched still. This field tends to drain fairly well, but now for back-to-back -back matches here in regular season play, this field has taken on quite a bit of water just in the days leading up to the match. Well, the Republic have created the Flex Pack to fit your busy schedule. Pick four to six matches and make the pack work for you. Visit us online to get tickets. Usman, Gomez. Lobbed in, chance here, bobbled up is Cullen with a big save over the bar. And it was Felix Chinkum with his eyes on target. And Adam Moffitt may have disrupted it just enough. And it remains scoreless here at Papa Murphy's Park. I like a little battle in there by Chinkum. I think Moffitt as well. 
Shakem wins the battle and just heads the ball straight down. Slippery surface, something difficult for Cohen to deal with. It looks like it was Jeremy Hall actually. It'll be Ray Sari to take the first corner of the second half for the Seattle Sounders too. Again, each side playing with 10 men and now Jeremy Hall and Francisco Narbonne have a few things to say to each other. And Jeremy Hall is having to be calmed down, something we don't typically see from the Republic captain. And he is not taking too kindly to something that Sam Rogers has done. And Radchuk will call Jeremy Hall and Sam Rogers over. Rogers may have a few inches on Hall, but there's no way Jeremy's going to take anything from the youngster. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, there's there's pushing there's pushing happen all the time, and I, you know if Sam Rogers is taking offense to somebody, some someone pushing him. Sorry to say, man, it's going to be a long career for you, <laughs> or a short career. Yeah. Um, you're going to get pushed. You're going to be grabbed. Figure out a way to not make an impact. Here we go again. Seattle ball set in. Peeling away, looking for an opportunity, headed well over the bar. And the Republic fans with a slight golf clap as the ball does not find target. 55 minutes in, scoreless here at Papa Murphy's Park. Two good opportunities for Seattle. Those may have been our bone. Cohen sends it. Schmidt finds it. Narbonne goes back to it. It's interesting the, the amount of challenges and the tussling between the two sides we've seen here tonight. There's Chankum. Comes back to it. Finds a bit of wet grass. Lops it in. Finding Hines. Hines volleys it down with his left foot. Now finding his right foot. Stuck inside, Gomez able to poke it free, and Sacramento gets away. Sacramento's pretty lucky not to concede a foul there. This is like Shannon Gomez, maybe just a little bit late. But for two sides that don't have quite a history, this is probably the most physical we've seen in the nine matches we've seen between these two sides over the last couple of years. Yeah, I would agree. Just interesting how, you know, when teams line up year to year, they're, you know, sometimes, especially in the USL, they're significantly different. Tonight, they're significantly different than, than last week for Seattle, and just, you know, frustrations could come to the surface from all sorts of angles. But here we go, we got a chippy one tonight. Hard. And a foul and it, is. And it'll lead to, to and it'll lead the fun ones too going forward <laughs> with these, as this being the first matchup between the two sides this year. So the whistle blows it will play on for Seattle's well-being. Hope you out. We'll have Hayden Partain at the next opportunity. Hines battling. Schmidt. And the flag goes up. So our substitution, it will be Hayden Partain, who had been dealing with a little bit of a hip issue. And he will replace Kevin Aliman. So into his normal position, I guess, would be the right way to say it, is that typically we've seen Hayden Partain in the midfield. But because of injuries, he was playing in the back. But now he's in the midfield, and he'll come in for Kevin Aliman, who's had a very active evening. And so Hayden Partain, a 23-year-old from Frisco, Texas, makes his first appearance and the 58th minute and the first substitution of today's match. Yeah, and the push. Cam Wassa up top, probably with Bijev, just with, withdrawn a little bit. And Hayden Partain out here on the right, the right flank, the right wing. Ball kept low. Chankum able to shoulder off Gomez for a moment. Gomez able to recover and picks up the throw. Nicely done by the right back for the Republic. Try to get this one upfield. It'll be a goal kick here. And it'll give us time to tell you about ESPN Plus. 
It's the new streaming home of the USL in the United States. Watch all the action throughout the 2018 regular season USL Cup playoffs. This will all start on April 14th. Visit uslsoccer.com for more details. And that partnership being announced today. A little bit of trouble here as Hines giving chase the second time we've seen that tonight. Off the face of Ray Sari here. Gomez looking to turn up field. Finding Partain, who just entered the game. Partain goes down, slips up, will pick up the foul against Usman. Partain. Oh, we recycle it back to Adam Moffitt. So with Adam Moffitt out most of the year is Jeremy Hall who was called on to be the leader. Here's a good chance for Bajev. Bajev gets it from Fowler off the post. Somehow it cannot find the net. And the fans here are beside themselves. But probably no one better to have seen that and thought that was going in, then Vian Bajev, Republic, still in action here. Strong strike from Justin Schmidt, Kevin Goldthwait. Soccer gods not with the Republic there on that action. It's just a crafty little piece of work here. Great ball by Adam Moffitt, kind of catching everyone flat-footed. Great touch right here around Rodgers, and just a little flick when you think that Sam Fowler is going to be able to come out and get this. Fowler may have gotten a touch on it. Tell you what, great little piece of skill there. Really unlucky, Bajev's not rewarded for that. Here's Hayden Partain moving forward. He's got his sight set on goal. He wanted that one. It'll be a throw for Seattle, and we have a substitution coming for the Sounders, too. And it's Jake Morris, typically a left back for this side. And he'll come and replace Ibrahim Usman. So a defensive substitution. Leaving the match, 34, Ibrahim Usman. He's replaced by number 59. Jake Morris, a 19-year-old academy player. His second appearance this season was called up with the U-20 team. The youth national side that took down France that Sam Rogers was also a part of. But came in the 65th minute as a substitute in the win against Portland. And here he is making his appearance, the second of the year, in the 62nd minute. So each side with a substitution, they each have two left. Both sides now playing with 10 men the rest of the way. A red card to Mitchell Tainer in the 20th. And then Rodriguez L picking up his second yellow in the 44th. It likely could have gone to Francisco Narbonne. Battle here along the end line. Good pressure continuing from the strikers from Seattle. A chance now, moving forward, cross it in. Laid up, left alone. No one there to follow as Hines made a run a bit early. Owasa. Shannon Gomez with a big strike. Looking for a, a streaking Bajev who had the best look on goal just moments ago and hit the right post. Ray Sari, a little bit more aggressive as well. These two teams will get back together on May 6th. It'll be a Sunday afternoon. It'll be in Tacoma where the Sounders, too, now play their games at Cheney Stadium, which is the home of the AAA baseball affiliate of the Seattle Mariners. And they're still continuing to work toward a soccer-specific facility down there in Tacoma. But so far, much better attended match in their first home opener, and then against Fresno a couple of days ago. A hard challenge from behind, but Jeff goes down, and we may see a red card, and we do. Absolutely. And Bajev is holding on to his left shoulder, and this could be trouble for Sacramento, as number 20 does not look to be in very good shape. 
And that is just a dangerous challenge. And there could be further, there could be further discipline to Denzel Alissi, the 19-year-old Haitian who came in strong. And that is all, that is all bad. That is not a good challenge. Dangerous from behind. A shoulder and elbow there by Bejev. It looks like also Chankum comes in pretty late, has a conversation with Radchuk that Radchuk did not want to have any part of. I, mean, I would not be surprised if Denzel Alessi sees additional time for that challenge. Kevin, your thoughts? I mean, from behind, dangerous. And you hope it just is a bit of a stinger and nothing more, but he's cradling that left shoulder. I would be surprised if Vian Bajev continues for Sacramento. And let's see who Simon Elliott decides to do here. But his left shoulder, he definitely is feeling something. It's one of those when you fall on it just awkwardly, you know, fully extended, just kind of Looks like he's okay though. There's a substitution coming in here for Seattle at this point. It's Dylan Tevis and he will replace Shandon Hopiow. So that's the second substitution for Seattle tonight. Dylan Tevis, a 17 year old midfielder academy player. And so Tevis is out. And then Nick Hines are getting instruction from the newest head coach for the Sounders too. It's John Hutchinson. An absolute brutal challenge from Denzo Alissi, and that is the second red card. So instead of now 10 men, it's Seattle who's playing with nine. And uh, this is these are the situations like you, you you can't even have contingency plans for. You know, with nine players, you start to think about you know what sort of formation. It's just let's figure this out on the fly. So let's reset it for you. Sam Fowler, the goalkeeper for Seattle. Sam Rogers, Jake Morris have been in the back. Now with the right back now out of the match after receiving the red card against beyond Bajev, who took a tumble along that left side. He's with Olsen, Narbonne, Sari, Heinz, Chankum, and Tevis, who just checked into this match. Hayden Partain there with the ball was the first substitution for the Republic. We may see another if beyond Bajev doesn't stay in this match, but he appears to be using his shoulder okay at this moment. And so he may stay in. So it's Iwasa Nisha on a breaking Vion Bajev now. Vion Jev brings it down. Vion Jev looking for it. And it was sent away by Francisco Narbonne. So it's Iwasa Nisha Partain via Real Bajev, as you just saw. Schmidt, Moffitt, Paul Gomez, and then Josh Cohen. Republic are playing with 10 men. Seattle with just nine after the latest red card. The second of the evening for Seattle. The third overall. Here's Beyond Bajev, the crowd getting into it. Short corner, sends it up, lays it in. Chance for Sacramento looking for a handball. Reset, they'll quickly throw in. Partain, Bajev looking to his left. Sent up field, and tactically, what can we expect here for the rest of the match? That's a great question, Rob. <laughs> I mean, like for Seattle, if I'm Seattle, I'm just parking the bus, and I'm, I may be leaving Chankum up top. It's a great Good little piece of skill here. Gomez. Getting past Jake Morris, who checked in. Gomez with a hard challenge. And that's going to be a penalty for the Republic, and Shannon Gomez was able to burn past the 19-year-old Jake Morris in Sacramento, has an opportunity, and the Sounders, too, are all in the face of Michael Ratchuk. Yeah, we got a lot of guys. Here's another look right now. Great little piece of skill there by Gomez. I don't know if that's in the box, Rob. That looks like it's about a step or two outside the box. Obviously, the, 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 the impact's right there. The it's on the line, no doubt about it. Either way, I think what we've seen the last couple of challenges from both sides, Ratchuk was going to be quick to blow the whistle. And Ratchuk's got to have figure out a way to calm things down a little bit. He's having a conversation with the linesman. This might be the different, the, the conversation. This might be at, out of the box or inside the box. That's close to call. Yeah, we got a, a discussion over here. So, so look, I, look at this. Adam we, we, we've sent got, the ball uh, down, and got, they did point over. So 
And now there's and we've got Nar Narbones over there stamping on the penalty spot, trying to. And Hayden Partain did not take too well, kindly just, to Well, uh, that's just, for me, that, 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 that goes across the line of sportsmanship. And that's Narbone doing. He's going over there just standing on the penalty spot right where Adam Moff will be putting his plant foot in the hopes of maybe having some sort of slip happen. And now he's all smiles over there. And, and it's exactly just, it, you know, and for me, that just that's, that, that draws the line in sportsmanship. It goes over it. So in a series that has had very few fireworks and mostly goals scored by Sacramento, and overall, it's been the Republic who have scored 11 goals and allowed just one here to Seattle in the all-time series. I tell you what, too, Rob, this is not the end of those, these fireworks that we're seeing. Right? I see Chankum and, and Jeremy Hall getting these, each other's face right now. And you get a caution coming here, probably for Narbonne. It is, and it's, so that is yet another card in this match. Sixty-ninth minute to Narbonne after he stood over the ball. And they're pleading their case that it should never be a penalty at this point. But here for Sam Fowler, this will not be an easy stop against a veteran. And now it's going to be a yellow card against Hayden Partain for retaliating. So here, he, keeping he, track he, at he, home, it's two red cards and four yellows. Two yellow cards by Rodriguez, which resulted in the red card of being sent out of the game. It's 10 men versus nine men, and now it's, it's Adam This is the last thing you want if you're Adam Moffitt. You don't want all this time to think about this. You want, it's, it's, and there's a lot of gamesmanship going on. You got Fowler going out there and moving the ball for Adam. But you also have a 17-year-old in the goal box taking on a 31-year-old with MLS experience. Here's Adam Moffitt, slots it in, and it's one to nothing, Sacramento in the 70th minute. It's a well taken penalty by Adam Moffitt. Just opens his hips up, hits it hard. Sam Fowler does a decent enough job trying to get guess the right way. And it only gets tougher for Seattle as they are down to nine men. Republic have 10, but they have the lead one to nothing. Is Adam Moffitt scores his first goal in 2018. Got a good look right here. Adam just opens his hips up a little bit. And with that first Republic FC goal of the evening, everybody in section two. And that's one of those two. I'm telling you, the, the amount of time that it takes from when the penalty hap is conceded to when he, when he takes the penalty, there's a lot of things to think about, a lot of gamesmanship happening. So good job by Adam Moffitt. When well, you got to feel good for number 16, seven appearances in 2017 because of injuries. Played his first full 90 in a year a week ago, and now he's got his first goal. Ball slips through, Chankum looking to make a run, Josh Cohen. We got but we've 20, seen this before, Kevin, still plenty of time left. 20 minutes to go, still plenty of time for Seattle to try to figure something out. But for Sacramento, Sacramento needs to figure out a way to keep the ball. The ball is going to be their friend. College students, listen up. Join us for College Night in our next home match, Colorado Spring Switchbacks, April 18. Tickets are on sale now. Smoke, strobe lights. They got it all in the Tower Bridge Battalion right now after that goal. They're feeling good. Cameron Wassa back to goal. Here's Narbonne, picked up a yellow card after standing over the ball in the spot for Adam Moffitt. Didn't seem to matter for Adam Moffitt. It's quite some time went by. And Awasa called offside. I thought that was off the Seattle player, but. And we may have one final substitution and one more hope for Seattle who's down with nine men. Jake Morris, Hines. Shannon Gomez, who's played well tonight, will pick up a foul here as the whistle's blown as Nick Hines tries to cut back in, and Hayden Partain takes a shove from the chest of Nick Hines. So this is where, if you're a Sacramento player right now, you've got to be cautious and know that, as what happened in that first half to Rodriguez L, 
I think it was a pretty quick caution. I bet it's going to come the same way for Sacramento right now. So if you're Sacramento, if you're Adam Moffitt and these guys, Jeremy Hall, I think you should be telling each other, let's be calm, let's be smart. Don't do anything silly to even warrant a conversation. And be smart. So here's a substitution is Felix Chankum comes out. It's David Estrada, the former Sacramento Republic midfielder, who comes in, the 30-year-old returning to Seattle after spending four years with the MLS side from 2010 to 2014. Here he is, hoping to put one in the back of the nets for Seattle and try to earn a point on the road in a place where they have never, not only won, but have never even drawn with the Republic at Papa Murphy's Park. 74th minute, here we are. Set up, ball driven fairly well. It's a really good ball in the box by Ray, sorry. Seattle's had a six chances now from the corner this evening. David Estrada grew up in Northern California, Salinas. He was one of the top high school players in the country, 66 goals as a senior. Went on to play at UCLA before being drafted by the Sounders. And we'll have another substitution coming up. It's Nick Hines with his left foot, an in swinger here. Ball driven low, not good enough, but he'll get it right back. Quickly touched, treble here for Sacramento. Flag goes up, we may be offside. And that gives us time to have a substitution. So it's Wilson Nishaw to come out. And it will be Christian Isley. Christian Isley, great back to the ball. Your thoughts here on this substitution is a good shift for Wilson Nishaw. Didn't get as many touches as I think he was hoping tonight. But Christian Isley, a good back to goal type player. Yeah, back to goal type striker. Going to come in here, he's got some energy. We'll see what happens with, I imagine he's going to go up. Take that roll from Cam Owasa. Cam's probably going to drop underneath. And maybe more of a defense-minded substitution in my mind here. Even though you're bringing on a striker, but it's going to allow, I think, both Cam Owasa and maybe even Bejev to sit back a little bit as he got some fresh legs up top with Isley to be able to chase some stuff around and try to be a nuisance up there. And don't forget, Sacramento playing with just 10 men as Josh Cohen slips a bit on that delivery, but somehow finds Hayden Partain anyway. But Seattle's playing with just nine. A red card to Mitchell Tainer in the 20th, and then Rodriguez with the yellow card in the 32nd, and then earned another one, which was questionable in the 44th. So both sides playing with 10 men as they went into halftime, and then Ulissi with a red card, and he was sent off, brought it down to 10 men, and then two yellow cards, Narbonne and Partain after the penalty. Payton and Bajev with a good look at it, trying to test Sam Fowler, who's having a much better debut in 2018 than he had one in 2017. Nick Hines, pace, continues to cause fits for Sacramento. Yeah, you see Bajev too, coming up on that, that left side, just so dangerous. Bajev, Owasa now in the middle of the park. As Isley moves up top, just as you predicted, Kevin Goldthwait. What a strong challenge. That time, David Estrada has been very active against his former club. Public FC launches 2018 kits. Purchase your Nike kit online at sacrepublicfc.com or visit the team store located 17th and Broadway. And you look at a player like David Estrada, such a talented midfielder. He's now 30 years of age, but bounced around a little bit. It didn't even last the entire season with Paul Buckle and the staff here in 2015 and was sent to Orange County, then has found his way to Charlotte for the second time in his career. Now he's back with Seattle, but you look at a guy with his talent, his skill set, why hasn't he landed in place too long? I don't know, maybe he just can't figure out a way to be of value. I mean, there's so many, you know, uh, variables in that situation. You start to talk about the, the economics of the game too, where he's a guy that's been around for a while. He's at an age, obviously, that, that guys aren't taking chances on any, anymore, but he is a guy who scores goals and has scored goals where he's gone. Just probably comes down to a product of some things and some decisions that, that managers and 
staff feel that, you know, unless he's scoring 10, 12, 13, 14 goals a season, he's better off somewhere else, depending on what, you know, sort of budget number he is on your, on your roster. Well, for Seattle, part of the deal is that he's also going to be an assistant coach for the academy. So uh, maybe long-term plans in the eyes of David Estrada, maybe what the next career may hold. Just 30 years of age, still plenty of time as a professional soccer player, however. Yeah, maybe a smart move by Dave, too, for his, you know, his, his future, to be able to, you know, find something, find a career, the next step. It's always something these guys need to think about. Good field play here. Morris finding Estrada. Estrada goes down outside the box in a dangerous Silly. situation for Sacramento here. Silly foul right there. This is where, I mean, set pieces are going to be Seattle's friend. I think Villarreal just needs to work his feet a little bit better. Strata, he goes down a little bit soft, but still is able to get his body in between the player and the ball. And you got to be smarter than that if you're Villarreal, you know he's going to go down. See some action over this ball. You got Olsen, Narbonne, as well as uh, Hines. And Hines took that set piece earlier in the first half. It wasn't the best result. Looks like he's walking away right now. Well, it'll be probably the right-footed Ray Sari, who is the elder statesman on this team at the moment. Other than David Estrada, who just checked in. He was his, his eldest at 22 years of age to start the match. So David Estrada leads the Sounders, too, with two goals on a brace and a 4-2 defeat against Swope Park. But right now, it's David Olson who's making his third appearance. Looks like to be taking this set piece here. Seattle trying to tie it up with just men, nine men on the field. Sorry, we'll peel off strong. Ball over the bar, and the crowd appreciates it. Yes, yeah, that's a situation where you see David Olsen is trying to strike that ball too hard, in my opinion. You're close enough. If placement's going to be your friend rather than power. And if you're going to hit it hard, it's going to be hard to get it over the wall and back down under the crossbar. It's got to be hit a little softer if you're that close. Well, especially looking for a potential rebound. That gave you no chance there. Sacramento fans will like it. 80 minutes gone by. They lead by one. A penalty kick goal from Adam Moffitt. Is drawn by Shannon Gomez. Will public have created a flex plaque to fit your busy schedule? Pick four to six matches and make the pack work for you. Visit us online and get your tickets. Other news for the Republic is a new signing. Met GM Todd Dunovan going to Slovenia to make his newest signing. A Seattle building here. Cutting in, trying to take advantage. Jeremy Hall, can he get out of it? Still dangerous. Seattle's got some space, got some time into the arms of Josh Cohen. You can now breathe a sigh of relief. But as we talked about, it's 25-year-old midfielder Yuri Matajic, who signed a one-year deal, the team option for 2019. Played last six years in Slovenia. And Todd talked about uh, adding just another attacking piece and how that's never a bad thing for a club. And so adding some depth in the midfield and an attacking player at that, and they're very excited about this guy who says combines very well with the strikers up top, which Sacramento seems to have uh, going pretty well already. Yeah, I think Todd said it perfectly. Can never have enough or too many attacking players or too many attacking options. Especially with a thin bench right now for Sacramento and a back heel from Bajev. Just fooled Nick Hines completely and had to take a knee and pay his respects. Sacramento, Sacramento you're, you're talking about the, the back line's been the one who's been injury plagued here. But depth is needed for this Republic team. They're looking good right now, up a goal. Jake Morris has got some size for his age, and he's lumbering forward. Looking to make something happen. Jeremy Hall and company trying to hang on for about 10 minutes or so. Is Isley is out of play. I need to move the ball still, Rob. Seen the last couple of minutes, it seems like Sacramento is a bit complacent when they get the ball and when they get their foot on the ball. Need to move it quickly, move it back, forth, left, right. But don't dwell on it. And don't take it for granted.
Sorry. Hayden Partey trying to find some real estate. Finds Awasa peeling his Isley. Just a tad bit behind him, but Jeff finds it, settles it in. Partain. Partain being held. It'll go against Partain. I think that ball from Awasa. He just needs to be a little more patient with that. Let the run, let the play develop. Probably taking another touch to let Isley's run materialize a little better. USL's official Facebook page brings you the best from across the league with news, highlights, and interactive features like the USL and Facebook to get the league's best content delivered directly to you. Challenge from Jaime Villarreal. He'll be whistled. Who stood out for you for the Republic tonight? You know who's played pretty well, I think, is Bejev and the attacking side of things. I think Adam and Jeremy have paired well, considering that you know Adam Moffat started this game in the center of the center of the park. This is Jeremy Hall's first appearance at center back this year. Good combination from Seattle. Ball over the top. Battling here. Sacramento not quite done yet. Going for goal, and it just skips across the face. Beautiful play from Christian Isley and nearly made it two to nothing. We don't have an angle, but it didn't look like it missed by much. Kind of an outswinger. Would have been needed to be perfectly placed, but a good job right there battling with Ray Sari and see Sam Fowler coming out real early. Fowler's, try Fowler's trying to get himself back into that goal box. Good move from Morris. Getting past Partey. Jeremy Hall settles things down. And that's the veteran presence from a guy like Jeremy Hall and Adam Moffat that doesn't get a lot of attention. But it's that perfect play right there that just settles things down and lets now a counter come to the way of Republic. But it's Isley who can't find it. It's cut off from Seattle's back line. I agree with that touch by Jeremy Hall too, Rob. It's, it's one of those things that it goes from being a clearance to you retaining possession. It's just Jeremy Hall being able to think a little bit quicker. Here's David Estrada. Inside challenge from Hall. Now while Hall and Estrada were both for the Republic in 2015, they did not play together as Hall was added after Estrada left for Orange County. Ray Sari, very good with his right foot. He's going to look for goal, sends it in. It's too much time. Sacramento's got to put pressure. Christian Isley looking to break free. A little trouble with Michael Ratchek, the referee, right in his way. They couldn't find some space. Good ball here from Partey. He's got Isley now as Bajev tried to send it through quickly. And it's Dylan Tavis, the academy product, who was able to slow it just enough. Seattle still fighting, giving a lot of credit. Just nine men on the field for Seattle, 10 for Sacramento. We'll have your say in who becomes the USL Player of the Month for March. Which players are in the USL Gold of the Month? And say for each month, you can cast your vote this weekend, uslsoccer.com. Shannon Gomez pointing for Isley to shield. He does just that. Challenge for Partain. Partain wins it. It's good hold up play again by Isley. Maybe a little bit of heavy touch, but still, he's got Sam Rogers right on his backside. I think that's one of those uh, underappreciated pieces of skill that, that Isley has. The Real finding Bajev. Gomez on the right, making a good run. He'll find the ball at his feet. He's in the 18 now. Cuts it back to Bajev. Bajev goes down in the box. Will not earn the foul. Ray Sari with a little bit of a bump. Not enough, says Michael Radchuk. That's a good defending by Sari. I think Bajev goes down pretty soft. Sacramento can get one more, likely can seal it. Seattle, however, still in business. Ball bobbles around, looking for a handball. Is inadvertent, no call. Morris goes down, will not get the whistle, and Ratchuk is not going to give anything easy here in the final moments of this one. It looks like Seattle's really pressing, too, throwing everything forward. It's a chance for Sacramento to counterattack here, but be smart with these counterattacks. Don't, don't need to score a goal, just need the ball. 
bit tougher to do with just nine men as well, Kevin. Sacramento can play almost keep away for the final few moments. Morris baiting him. No reason to go there. That's what Shannon Gomez needs to do a little bit better, be a little smarter. There's no reason to go at Jake Morris 1v1. Just keep the ball, move it side to side. You're in that final third almost. Seattle can't score when you guys have the ball. Estrada finding Hines. Hines who's got great pace. A little heavy of a ball. Can Estrada get to it before it passes the touchline? And earns a corner kick. This is exactly what Seattle's trying to earn here in the final moments of week four. Seattle just three points on the year. They're currently near the bottom of the Western Conference, a place that they have found themselves the last two seasons. Republic trying to hold on for three. Move them to the top of the standings with a victory here tonight. And at the top is Swope Park, but Swope Park does have a loss as they have played five matches already. So for Sacramento, they would be with just four games in and would have 10 points if they can hold on to victory here. So let's see how Sacramento can finish here. Likely three to four minutes will be added to this match, however. We've had a couple of yellow cards handed out. We've had a red card handed to Alissi. Set up a penalty. Moments later, Shannon Gomez able to earn the penalty. And it was Adam Moffitt who sent it home for the one goal difference that we he see here tonight. Sam Rogers takes it back to his goalkeeper. Pressure from Bajev. Sacramento putting the pressure on Isley looking with his eyes big, Faden Partain. Partey's going to send the cross in, and it's Isley who can't cut in front of it. It's Narbonne who gets to it instead. Down hard goes Adam Moffat as Hines gets behind him. Owasa moving forward. Here's Bajev. He loves this angle. Can he get a good look on goal, and he'll earn a corner kick? Well, four minutes of... Stoppage time is brought to you by Rayleigh Something Extra Rewards Program. Earn points every time you shop. Shop today, Rayleigh's.com. Four minutes, about three minutes and some change left here at Papa Murphy's Park. Sacramento had to hold on and earn three more points and keep this undefeated start to the 2018 season alive. They're going to keep it in the corner, and try to kill the clock as much as possible. It's Christian Isley. Still fighting in the corner. Sacramento trying to eat down the clock. Seattle. Moffitt chasing back. Hines putting some pressure on. The wind has died down, but still a cool night in Sacramento. Shannon Gomez over the top. Partain, he's onside. Hence, final moments here in Sacramento. To be smart with it. Partain is shrugged. He'll stay on his feet. Sam Rogers battling. Partain keeps it low and stays on his feet. Love that battle between Hayden Partain and Sam Rogers. There's a whistle from Ratchuk telling everyone to get it going. And Partain is going to keep it in the corner as long as possible. Now Shannon Gomez comes to help. And a foul is drawn, and a good foul nonetheless. This slow Seattle just a bit, who played just nine men. Ball up over the top, a little bit of trouble. Hines looking for goal. Hayden Partain. And Jeremy Hall and Nick Hines, a big save from Josh Cohen. And it remains one to nothing. 
unreal. The fact that this gets, that Nick Hines is able to get in behind after where the ball was for the last five sec, or excuse me, 30 seconds. That pace from Hines has been a problem all evening and Hall just trying not to give up a penalty late there. Cohen stays low and another big save from number one. He's been fantastic in the first four weeks of play. He's been great at home. Saved the win here in week one against San Antonio with a superb play. He's had a couple really big saves and really big moments of games. And there's another example right there, Rob. So Partain kept in the corner. Hines able to break free. Paul may have slowed him just enough. Still not done Seattle again. Now it's Estrada. Josh Cohen, this is getting a bit nervous here. And the whistle is blown, and that is it. So the last play of the game is a nervous one for Republic fans. But they'll go home happy in week number four. The Republic pick up another three points. They have 10 points on the season. And a big night for the Republic as they win this one by a score of one to nothing. Adam Moffitt with the decider after Shannon Gomez picks up the penalty on the edge against Sam Rogers, and it's a big one for Sacramento. They take this one one to nothing. We'll have your final recap coming up after this. Papa Murphy's presents a fresh take on fresh. Here's the deal. If it comes from a freezer, not fresh. Box, not fresh. Bag, not fresh. Fresh means just chopped vegetables. Cheese grated by us daily. Fresh means we don't even have ovens, because you have an oven. So you can feel good about feeding it to your Home bacon XL NY pizza topped with giant pepperoni and ground sausage on an extra large foldable New York style crust. Just $8. Papa Murphy's, love at 425 degrees. When you set out to find new roads, you can't do it alone. You need a partner on the journey, one you can count on. More and more people are finding themselves in a Chevrolet for the first time. Trying something new can be exciting, empowering, downright exhilarating. See for yourself why Chevrolet is the most awarded and fastest growing brand the last four years overall. See your greater Sacramento area Chevy dealers. You don't just want easy. You want streaming all your favorite shows on the fastest internet easy. You want internet that helps you save on mobile easy. You want the best Wi-Fi you can pause with a tap. See? Easy. Time for bed. You want Xfinity because it makes your life simple, easy, awesome. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $40 a month for two full years when you sign up for TV. Plus, get three times the speed of AT&T and DirecTV. Click, call, or visit a store today. Spring is coming. Time to save on a new Toyota. Many models come with Toyota Safety Sense. Standard. Right now, lease a roomy, family-friendly Highlander for just $309 a month. Toyota. Let's go places. It was an intense one at Papa Murphy's Park. And you're taking a look right now at our man of the match brought to you by Papa Murphy's. But we're going to get back to Shannon Gomez in just a moment. We're going to talk to this match and what an intense one it was. Let's take a look at your NorCal Honda full-time highlights and an exciting match to say the least. We weren't quite sure what we'd see from these two sides, but Sacramento and Seattle, Kevin, it was a fun one. Yeah, there was a lot of fireworks, a lot of action. Obviously the first half, no goals. This is one of Sacramento's better chance. Kamawasa right here, a good strike, good movement, actually not the best strike. And then here you go, great little touch there. And then the red card, Mitchell Tainer, and that would start off a chain reaction of going to the bookings for Michael Radchek on the evening. Yeah, it's opened up. Here's a great little piece of skill. Great run that continues by Kamawasa. Just thinks he has a goal here, just kisses off the post. But a good build-up play by Sacramento in the first half. That's the best chance for Sacramento. So a red card coming as this was the challenge. And it looked like Narbonne was the guilty one. It was the second yellow for Rig L. And so he is shown yellow. And that is the red card coming. And now both sides are down to 10 men on the match. A gift for the Republic, to say the least. And this may have been the best technical seal we saw all night. Yeah, great little piece of skill. Puts it right through open. 
Exposed legs right through the middle here. But Jeff was really good tonight also. Just uh, crafty. He's just so crafty on the ball, especially coming in off that left side on his right foot. And then as we looked for this, it was a great opportunity for Seattle and Cohen. Two big stops tonight. This was the first. Yeah, the first one. This is just finding the seams right there. Jeremy Hall is not able to really make himself in the right, but put himself in the right position. And then a nail biter for Sacramento as a beautiful ball from Moffitt. Great little touch by Bichev right there, right around Sam Rogers, just off the post, but just a great piece of skill. I'll tell you what, Bichev was all over the place tonight. Unlucky not to get something for his efforts. And then let's take a look. This was the deciding. Red card that put it down to nine men, and it was Ulysses who was shown red. It's a dangerous moment, yeah, a scary moment. Clumsy. And then Shannon Gomez able to draw the red card, or excuse me, draw the foul in the box. It was close, but nonetheless, Adam Moffitt uh, would be taking the penalty kick, and that would be a good one for Sacramento as he just slots it home. Yeah, does a great job, Adam Moffitt, there after a lot of gamesmanship happening in that box after that penalty was called, and Cooley slots it in the corner and that would be the difference maker so for sacramento they look like they had in the bag and nick hines nearly made it one one the final moments but they would hold on so the republic earned three more points and they moved to 10 points on the year after four matches and uh, stats didn't really tell this full story here tonight but you can see the amount of cards that were handed out and it was quite a few to say the least. But for Sacramento, they'll take it any way they can get it. The games haven't always been pretty, but they've come away with points all four weeks. Can't ask for much more than that. So our Papa Murphy's man of the match, as we said earlier, and you like Shannon Gomez tonight. He was able to do a lot of things from that right back position, shows a lot of pace and able to draw that penalty in the box against Sam Rogers. Yeah, he did a great job, Shannon Gomez. And one of the, one of the best things about Shannon Gomez that we haven't talked about really is his athleticism, able to get, get in behind and be able to track things back, track, stri track strikers back. So a great night for Shannon Gomez, drew the penalty kick, and uh, hopefully he continues off this uh, good run of form here. Spent the last two seasons with NYCFC injuries, uh, not able to find himself uh, in the 18 very often, so he finds his way to Sacramento. Let's take a look now at our zoom image of the match, and it's a good one. Uh, by the team here, and it's Wilson Nishaw. Uh, and Nishaw had a couple of good looks tonight, but none that would find the back of the net. Got to find number eight more touches if they want to continue this run of form, I believe. Got to spread the love around a little bit. But let's take a look what we got coming up next week. Las Vegas Lights. They've had some pretty good showings in uh, the south part of Nevada, the expansion franchise, and it should be a fun one. Uh, in what is other another converted baseball stadium into the USL site. And this is where the Las Vegas 51s play uh, their uh, AAA baseball team uh, in the north part of Las Vegas. A fun one here. Sacramento, 10 points after the big win, one to nothing. We want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. All the users watching at home on the My 58. We appreciate you as well. For Kevin Goldthwaite, I'm Rob McAllister. Hope you have a great one. We'll see you in a week from Las Vegas. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United States.